what's up YouTube? It's Gabriel, just another fan TV. Back at you another video. If you like the content of this video, uh, go ahead hit that like button. We're coming with training camp daily. That's what I'm trying to do here. Uh, if you like the content of this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, man. Because like I said, training camp content going to be coming. Then we're going into the season. So I'm going to keep rolling and rolling, man. All right, so look, man. Uh, day three of uh, Ravens training camp just happened. So what, what did it go on? But real quick, uh, I want to talk about two things um, from the uh, day two that I missed. Some defensive highlights, right? Um, Malik Harrison blitzing up the middle, caught some pressure. Michael Pierce is cut, cut in a couple solid days in a row. So I guess it's three things. So, And then last thing really quickly, uh, Calais Campbell and Brent, Brent Urban, you know, were using their wingspan to get to the passing lanes. I mean, these guys are 6'8". Uh, I think they're both 6'8". So that's an effective weapon. You know, if you can get your hands on it and bat down the, bat down the ball, awesome, right? Uh, so those are some, some things that I missed from that's some like defensive highlights from day two. Now on to day three, all right? You know, we start with off the field stuff, right? Um, ben Cleveland failed the conditioning test for the third straight day. Uh, he did not practice. So I don't know if he takes the conditioning test to practice again when it's the training camp practice tomorrow, um, or is he just done until maybe start again next week? I'm not 100% sure, but he did not practice today because he once again failed the conditioning test. Okay. Um, the regular guys were out for the pup list with three new additions, though. Uh, Calais Campbell, Marcus Williams, and Nick Boyle all did not practice today. Now, Calais and Williams looked like it was kind of um, rest and recovery, kind of like veteran days. So, no, nothing to worry about there. Nick Boyle could be an injury. Not 100% sure. They said yesterday there were some trainers working on him. At, um, I believe when the practice was ending and into after practice, they were working on him for at least 30 minutes. So, he didn't practice today. So, hopefully, he's not an injury for Nick Boyle, but, you know, something to watch out for. All right, Greg Roman. A couple guys had a press conference today. I think a doctor always up there. Greg Roman was up there. But, you know, took a couple things with Greg Roman's press conference. Just two things, really. Uh, he says that Ben Powers right now is leading the job at left guard, which is a little surprising because you would think it's between Cleveland and Tommy Phillips. But Cleveland's not practicing because he, he can't pass the conditioning test. And I'm not sure what's going on with Tommy Phillips, okay? So Powers is taking advantage of this opportunity. And he's leading right now. He really said it's too early to say because it is. Then there, it's hard to judge off the line with no pads. But... Either way, he said that ben, uh, ben Powers is in the lead for that left guard spot. All right. Uh, second thing he said that was interesting. Lamar Jackson's throwing the ball better than ever, um, which shouldn't be a surprise. Uh, this year is definitely his best. He's looked passing the ball. I mean, I know it's only uh, training camp in the very beginning, but every year he gets better. So we're going to take notice of that. Said this is his best passing. So we'll see that. We'll see if that means for the offense, right? We'll see if that changes, you know, what he could do. Maybe more concepts, you know. I know Greg Roman is not the most um, mad, you know, he doesn't have the greatest imagination when it comes to passing concepts, but maybe with Lamar Jackson increased ability, maybe that will uh, allow him to open it up a little bit more. All right, so what happened on the field, right? Let's start with some defensive stuff, right? Geno Stone, Tony Jefferson, both caught interceptions today. Geno Stone had the first interception of the camp. Um, of this training camp period so far. Uh, both interceptions came from third-string quarterback Anthony Brown, so not from Huntley, not from Lamar. But still, you know, it's good to see the defense getting their hands on the ball. Today was the highlight of the one-on-one. -on -one. And one-on-one -on -one is one of the most exciting times. You get to see best versus best, mano a mano, uh, who, who's going to win this route. So that's what the Ravens did pretty much for this, this practice period. And... Uh, yeah, I can tell you how it went. So, like I said, Lamar Jackson was good overall. Great day. 18 for 25. Sharp all over the field. Passing uh, with zip on the ball. Loft, touch. He was doing it all. Okay. Um, 18 for 25 is like 72%. I think James Henley, Hensley has been tracking all his passes. And he said, like, Lamar's a total of, like, 68% so far in camp. Which is cool. Um, nothing to get too riled up about because, obviously, they're in shorts right now. But Lamar's throwing the ball accurately. And most of his incompletions, it sounded like is uh, some drops, really. You know, he's not really missing the target too much. Uh, so that's good to hear, right? Um, so, so who had a good day in the one-on-ones? Proche, Duvernay, Bateman, and uh, my rookie, Isaiah Likely, right? All had good days. He also, he also said Shamar Bridges was pretty active today. Now, the Ravens, Shamar Bridges is interesting because the Ravens have a fifth wide receiver spot. 
that's going to go to somebody. And Shamar Bridges is a, is a guy in that running. Him, Mikai Polk, Slade Bolden, and maybe even a veteran if they decide to sign somebody. So hearing Shamar Bridges' name from reporters is interesting. I mean, he's six, I think he's about 6'4, six, 6'5, six, 210, 215 pounds, really fluid mover. And he stood out in the OTAs in the rookie mini camp. So now he's trying to make a same, he's trying to make a name for himself in training camp. So if Jamar, if Jamar Bridges can be that fifth receiver and make the team like that, who knows? Maybe he even gets some red zone work. Like I said, he's a big target. All right. Um, who else? Who else? Mark Andrews versus Kyle Hamilton happened, and Mark Andrews versus Chuck Clark happened. Now, Mark Andrews won both matchups, but they was both close. They said that Chuck Clark, uh, Mark Andrews didn't make a tough catch on Chuck Clark, and that Kyle Hamilton was running stride for stride Mark Andrews, and Andrews kind of separated at the end. Now, Kyle Hamilton running stride for stride Mark Andrews is great. Mark Andrews still winning the matchup is what he does. You know, to me, he's the best tight end in the league. And, you know, he's he's going he's going to get over on guys, you know. So that's no surprise there. But uh, Kyle Hamilton being close to him, having tight coverage, and just, you know, Mike Andrews being Mike Andrews making a play, what can you do about that? But, you know, it's good to see the rookie is there tight in coverage. Um, Rashad Bateman and Marlon Humphrey are going at it every day. Uh, Bateman apparently won this round, hit him with like a curl route or a comeback route for about 15 yards. Uh, so right now, I think if you if you want to keep score, technically it's like two one Bateman, right? It seems like I think um, Humphrey got the first day, got day one. Bateman got day two, and now he's got day three as well. So we'll see what happens uh, when we get live in the training camp day four at the uh, M&T Bank Stadium. Uh, we'll see if Marlon Humphrey can can even up the series. But when Marlon Humphrey talks about these Ravens wide receivers, I swear the only guy he brings best was Rashad Bateman. And he knows that Rashad Bateman is the guy. He knows that he's the number one receiver on his team. And Marlon really says that he's using Rashad Bateman to get better. That's high praise. Marlon is an all-pro, pro bowl corner. And he's saying that I'm using this guy who was a rookie last year, second-year guy, who, um, who hasn't done much yet, but I'm using him to get better. That only bodes well for the Ravens and, and their hopes in, in Rashad Bateman. So that was good to hear. And they always have good competition, good battles back and forth. And it's like it's all love. All right. Um, and also Isaiah Likely, right? I said he had a good day. Isaiah Likely versus um, Tony Jefferson. Apparently, he broke Tony Jefferson's ankle at the line. Now, we know Tony Jefferson is, isn't the greatest in pass coverage, but this is about Isaiah Likely, man. Broke him at the line, got on him, got, got, got downfield, scored a touchdown again. Uh, it's becoming a daily habit with Isaiah Likely, man. It really is. But this is what he needs to do. He needs to force the Ravens' hands to play him because the Ravens will try to slow play a rookie if they even see the, shot, the, the little smallest piece of doubt that, oh, maybe he's not ready. So that he needs to constantly show the Ravens, hey, look, I'm ready. Get me on the field. And he's doing that so far. Um, I think they said Devin DuVernay went up over top of uh, Robert Jackson, beat him on a straight go route, used that speed to get past him. Um, James Prochet, uh, worked over. I can't remember these corners exactly. I might have a I might have a tweet up uh, up there. But um, James Prochet had a good practice. Um, they said Bateman and Prochet were kind of the two main top receivers. Look, one day is one day is Duvernay. Uh, one day Wallace is making plays. Now it's Prochet making plays. Look, all of these guys are showing up right now and doing something. And that's what the Ravens need. They need one of those guys to really break out significantly. And help be a wide receiver too next to Rashad Bateman. And these guys are putting in the work, man. They put in the work. Now, one on ones obviously is tailored towards the wide receiver because the wide receiver can run any route and things of that nature. But you still got to win. And these guys are winning today. But it seemed like it was a good exchange back and forth. It didn't seem like the, don't get me wrong, Malawan Jackson was sharp, had a good day, but it didn't seem like the, the defense was completely dominated by the offense. You know, defense has some plays too, some, some interceptions, some deflections. So it was a good back and forth, man. And that's what it should be. Because when you got, you know, sharp on sharp, iron on iron, that's what's going to happen, man. Some you're going to win, some you're going to lose, son. Huh? But that was the highlight of today's uh, training camp, man. Just one-on-one -on -one action, best on best, and who's going to win the matchup. And the Ravens had some wide receivers, and, and, and you know, tight end Isaiah Likely and Mark Andrews winning their matchup. So that's good to hear. Also, guys like Geno Stone and Tony Jefferson getting interceptions. We need to get need to hear about the guys getting their hands on the football. So that's good to hear. Um, 
So far, man, it seems like it's been a good training camp. No real injuries so far. Knock on wood. Okay. You know, obviously, you know, Charlie Kohler has the sports hernia. You know, hopefully he gets surgery on that and he'll be all right. We'll see what's happening with Nick Boyle. Um, but everybody's on a pup list. No, nobody's been added. Everything seems to be status quo. So we'll take that for right now. Uh, good practice for the Ravens. I'm ex super excited for the training camp practice uh, in the open stadium, M&T Bay Stadium tomorrow. Can't wait for it. And, uh, man, hey, look, if y'all going to come out, man, let me know. It's your boy Gabriel. Just on the Fan TV. I'm out.